Hello! My name is Pei and today I'm gonna show you how I do my gauntlet and corrupt the gauntlet trance as a beginner on a medium level account. The gauntlet is most likely a fan favorite encounter because you don't actually need your own gear and waste your own resources. Inside, you're given a limited amount of time to explore randomly generated rooms and gather various resources to craft gear which you would then use to kill the boss. You can see why this is one of the favorite encounters since you can easily make or rebuild your bank here. It's worth to note that dying inside of Gauntlet is not a safe death, so all of you hardcore gamers watch out because once you're inside the prison, you're stuck there. Forever. There are two versions of the encounter, Gauntlet and Corrupted Gauntlet, or as players like to call it, the Red Prison, which is just a version with increased difficulty and better drop rates. You can only attempt CG if you have completed the regular Gauntlet once. In order to run Gauntlet, you need to complete one of the longest quests in the game called Song of the Elves. It's quite a hefty quest with a lot of sub-quests and skill level requirements. It will take some time to grind those in order to start the quest, but luckily for us, grinding skills in RuneScape is so much fun. The quest itself is 90% running while placing mirrors and pointing lasers inside a huge library, so make sure you stack up on stamina potions. Once you've done the mission impossible, you're going to fight a fragment of Siren which is kinda introductory to the gauntlet bosses, but only in terms of weapon and prayer switching. For this encounter, you're going to need a range and a magic weapon. Good luck. The gauntlet is located in Prif and you can talk to any real estate agent in the game if you wish to relocate your house there for easier access. In terms of stats, I have a mid-level account which is pretty decent for this gauntlet runs, especially the regular one. Corrupted gauntlet is very much doable as well, just have little to no wiggle room since the boss hits decent through prayers and one mistake can cost you the whole run. If you're using rune like client, and you should be, use it. There is a plugin called the gauntlet which has a lot of pretty neat features such as resource tracking and outlining. This will come in real handy for our runs, so make sure you have this tracker set up like so. Outline the boss style in the plugin as well. One of the most important things to know about gauntlet is the layout of the map. As you can see, the boss spawns in the middle and the other 12 highlighted rooms are all possible spawn locations of demi bosses. Demi bosses drop resources which are used to craft the highest tier of weapons inside the gauntlet. Dark Beast drops a bowstring which is used to craft a tier 3 bow. Dragon drops a crystal orb which is used to craft a tier 3 staff. And Bear drops a crystal spike which is used to craft a tier 3 halberd but we're not going to use a melee weapon in gauntlet. There are 3 tiers of armor and weapons to craft and for these runs we're going to use tier 2 armor and tier 3 weapons. This is a safer method and to be honest, I always prefer a safer outcome because I'm not really competing for anything and I'd rather increase my chances of finishing a run than have it hanging by a thread. So let's dive into a run with explanations on what needs to be done and how I'm doing it. Once inside, the first thing you're going to notice are the resources in the top left corner of your screen. These are the totals that we need in order to craft our armor and weapons and these are coming from a runelight plugin. We're going to split the encounter into two resource runs and we're going to use this common tactic coming from the runescape wiki page. Run 1 consists of exploring the inner rooms around yours and boss's starting positions. In this run, your goal is to collect 7 ore, 7 wood, 7 cotton, 1 weapon frame and ideally 2 leaves. Run 2 consists of running to the outer rooms trying to find the correct demi bosses and gathering food. In this run, your goal is to collect 1 crystal orb, 1 crystal bowstring, 1 weapon frame, 3 to 4 rows of fish and the rest of the crystal shard. So you're in your starting room and the first thing you're going to do is zoom out so you can see the area around you. You're going to open the 3 adjacent rooms and choose the best route. For our first run, the goal is to collect 7 ore, wood and cotton, so I'm going into the room with wood. Once you've gathered 7 wood, you can drop the axe. You can also notice that I crushed the crystal shard 2 times with a pestle and mortar in order to get 20 crystal dust. Crystal dust is needed to craft potions. You can do this at any point of your run, but I usually do it right at the start. Drop the pestle and mortar once done. If you take a look at the resources in the top left, wood disappeared from the screen. This will happen with every resource upon collection, so like I mentioned before, the room light plugin is really handy to have. I opened up the next room and I saw two leaves and a cotton, as well as a low level monster which can drop the one weapon frame that we need. The drop rate is very high, so you'll usually need to kill one or two of these for a weapon frame. I picked up the weapon frame, three cotton and two leaves and proceeded to the next room where I can get the rest of the cotton and some more. I opened up a room that has a possible demi boss spawn and we actually got a dragon location which is really nice. Beware when passing through since he can hit you and it will hurt. Now the only thing that's left to do is to collect the remaining four ore and we're done with the first run. As you can see, sometimes you'll have a bad luck in trying to find what you need, but don't give up, you'll eventually find it. Now that you have all the resources, we're gonna go to our starting position and drop all of them next to the crafting table, like so. 
We're going to craft the crystal staff twice to the attuned level and we're going to craft two empty vials. Afterwards you're going to fill the vials with water from the water pump and add leaf and crystal dust to it in order to make two potions. These potions act as a prayer and a stamina potion in one. You're often going to take one sip of this potion for your second run because your running energy will drop low. It's time for our run 2 in which we need to collect one crystal orb, one bowstring, one weapon frame, food and crystal shards. Equip your crystal staff and move towards the dragon which we found in our first run. He attacks with magic so protect from magic. Dragon drops a crystal orb as well as the weapon frame. Once done, we immediately move towards the other possible demigod spawn location in order to find the dark beast which drops the bowstring. We were lucky to find it a couple of rooms further. He attacks with range, so protect from range. Sometimes you're going to find yourself in an awkward situation where you're going to find two of the same demi bosses. So if you kill two dark beasts, the first one has a 100% chance to drop the bowstring and the second one has a 50% chance to drop either the crystal orb or the crystal spike. Often it's worth to take that risk if you're good on time. Even if the second dark beast drops the crystal spike, that only means the third demi boss, whichever it is, will have a 100% chance to drop the crystal orb as you can have the same drop two times. Now that we've collected our weapon upgrades, we need to collect food and the remaining crystal shards. Kill monsters for shards and fish in the wells for food. Usually, 3-4 to four rows of fish is more than enough. Sometimes, the monsters will drop fish as well. Once everything is gathered, you can use the teleport crystal to teleport back to your starting position. We're gonna drop the scepter and harpoon because we don't need them anymore and we're going to drop all the raw fish just to make ourselves some space. We're more than good with time and with enough practice, around 3 to 3 and a half minutes will be a regular leftover time to prepare for the boss battle. Click on the crafting table and upgrade your staff once so it becomes tier 3. Craft the bow 3 times and then collect all the resources from the ground. Craft tier 2 helm, body and legs. You need to click 2 times on each armor piece. Equip your armor and drop the remaining stuff which we don't need. Take all the raw fish and cook it in the cooking range. That's it, we are ready to fight the boss. Let's summarize the preparation once more. We have two runs. Run 1 consists of collecting 7 ore, 7 wood, 7 cotton, 1 weapon frame and ideally 2 leaves. Run 2 consists of collecting 1 crystal orb, 1 crystal bowstring, 1 weapon frame, 3 to 4 rows of fish and the rest of the crystal shards. Like any other encounter in RuneScape, the more you try it, the more it becomes engraved into your muscle memory. Now on to the boss run. If he's praying range, you're going to equip the magic staff and if he's praying mage, you're going to equip your bow. Either way, he's starting the encounter with ranged, so you're always going to pray range when entering the arena. The crystal goat has two regular attacks which you need to pray against, range and magic. The boss will alternate between these two attack styles for every six attacks that you make. Sometimes he will use an attack which will disable your prayers, so watch out for that. It is recommended to use sounds during the fight since all of the attacks are easily recognizable, meaning you don't have to look at the boss to know when to change prayers. Damaging floors will spawn throughout the fight, don't stand in them. He will occasionally spawn tornadoes which then chase you and deal damage if they touch you. This is the trickiest part of the fight because you need to run away from the tornadoes, watch out for the damaging floors and keep an eye on the prayer switches. The best advice I can give you here is to focus on avoiding damage rather than trying to hit the boss. You can also use this phase to heal yourself up. Remember, sound is your best friend during this encounter. Here's an unedited run of the boss fight which lasts around 2 minutes.
Ah, the Red Prison. The Corrupted Gauntlet is just a harder version of a regular gauntlet with reduced preparation time and a harder boss. So instead of the regular 10 minutes, you only get 7.5 minutes of preparation time. Boss mechanics are the same, but it has more HP. I highly suggest doing the regular gauntlet until you feel really comfortable with preparation and resource management, because in CG, you'll often find yourself having only seconds to do your last preparation, which can be a bit stressful sometimes. RNG can play a big role as well, since you can open a room with the wrong demi boss and lose a huge chunk of your time, which let's be real, you don't really have. If you're struggling with preparation time like I did in the beginning, I've seen people suggesting to craft tier 1 instead of tier 2 armor. This might be a valid tactic, especially if you have higher combat stats because instead of the regular 7 of each resource, you'd only have to collect 3 and save a good portion of your time. I've tried this, but then the boss completely wrecks me, even through prayers, so I'm sticking with my tier 2 method. It wasn't easy getting my first skill. RNG can be a real sometimes, but with a little bit of patience, I'm sure you'll get there as well. Just trial and error the encounter. Make sure to acknowledge your mistakes and try to fix them. It's definitely one of the best encounters to learn in RuneScape since it's really rewarding and literally doesn't cost you one single GP. If you like this beginner guide coming from an absolute beginner, make sure to check out my other guides as well. And as always, thank you for watching, hopefully you have a good rest of your day, and in the meantime, get on a gauntlet grind a sap. Come on, go do it. What are you waiting for? Thank <laughs> you.